？我我唔知嘅，我自己起初完全唔知嘅，<笑>因為我練得多，我我個經常同根葉萬學嗰啲好大隻，我嗰陣好瘦，我咁高同而家咁高一樣。我又冇矮過喎、哦，嗰陣時同而家係一樣咁高，我得一百一十二磅，你話幾瘦啊？我個手臂咧，即係而家呢度咁樣，即係攬得過嘅隻手。咁但係我越嚟越大力喎，咁啊嗰啲好大隻嗰啲，我都好似當佢冇嘢咁樣同佢碰下碰下咁，佢冇發展就要退㗎啦。佢佢點都撳唔喐我隻手㗎咁我後期我點解會咁勤力？誒、哎，你班友懶我勤力啫。咁初時都係一路係咁思想，後期冇理由喎、哦。懶都佢係鬥力都鬥贏人嘅咁樣。係我唔係熟練鬥贏人喎，係鬥力鬥贏喎。咁樣之後啊，我總能力喺邊度嚟咧？咁樣。好、哦，咁啊葉問話：你打小練頭啊嘛？咁佢佢就咁打下你嘅咋？佢唔同你講嘢。<笑>打少年頭打得多啊，咁啊咪又算數啦。咁啊點解後期臨到老我都咁大力嘅？<笑>又唔係喎，我都冇練少年頭好耐㗎啦。即係咁樣，咁啊一味思考我啲力量喺邊度嚟嘅，咁就慢慢去揾自己點解有呢種力量。咁先至揾出去解釋嗰個原因，咁就攞攞呢個原因去捉啲人嚟。玩嚟試，啊試下整下整下，佢有大力嘅喎，咁啊，即係咁樣揾出嚟嘅。It's quite a long answer. But <laughs> actually, Xi、uh, Gong didn't know when he get the lian tao or or spine going up. Uh, uh, when when he was young, learning Wing Chun, he he was a very thin guy. He's, he's pretty much that tall. Haven't shrunk shrunk even old, getting older. And uh, uh, and uh, just a、uh, hundred and twelve pounds. So uh, uh, keep on practicing, but there's some something telling him there is a difference. Like、uh, when he when he did chisa with the other big guys,、uh, those people telling him、uh, he's that powerful and using power to 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 push them away. So it's quite strange to him because he he was so thin, and and but at that time he just thought because they are lazy. I I have been uh, uh, going on carrying on intensive training. Every day like this, so that's his answer. He hasn't recognized he has got that kind of power. And and then the man told him, explained to him, you have practiced Silim Tao, and that, that's the answer. So so、uh, he he didn't really figure out a, a, a reasoning behind until he getting older. He he still feel or or the others are still telling him he's so powerful. Then he then he started to figure out. Try to figure out. We think, think, thinking back, what's happening there, and that's why the reasoning、uh, now we are listening to is、uh, the Lim Tao is there, and, and and he pick up this, especially for、uh, communicating this kind of arrangement in training, training up people's Lim Tao, which is quite a different part when he, he himself、uh, undergoing his own training. No such concept that we are talking about now. 譬如我每日花六個七個鐘頭練詠春，我讀,讀一個人練緊，起碼佔咗五個小時。一個人<笑>、呃、以前香港講我哋而家即係六十年前啦，可以講功夫嗰陣。About sixty years ago when he、uh, 我一個人上天棚，四面冇人嘅。嗰陣時香港啲燈冇而家咁光，度度都望到人嘅。有陣時上咗天棚就乜都睇唔到㗎啦。So every day, <laughs> so every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six to seven hours on Wing Chun training. Every day he spent about six <笑> what's, the, what's the most efficient thing to do? Just see him down. 哦，咁最最有效係誒、呃、練啲咩嘢咧？即係喺喺屋企咁樣。誒，每一每一樣嘢都有效嘅，你練到熟練就有效噶啦。哦 ，everything is effective. Ah,、uh, as far as you make it very familiar with yourself. 四哥，我想問下咧，誒，出
出兩三個啦，少年頭、陳橋、蘇萬、標子。咁就問咧，而家呢三個邊個係最緊要啲？最緊要啲，佢。小念頭練個基本功嗰啲，所謂基礎最好。你可以練到一種潛能出嚟。誒，尋橋咯，練住咁一種推動力出嚟，一個人個身體嘅重量可以擺落個拳頭嗰度。啊，標子就小念頭加埋尋橋嘅力量，用最快速度運用出嚟。咁你話邊樣好啊？冇咗小念頭，冇嗰種潛能。誒冇咗尋橋，冇嗰種體重嘅力量，放咗落個拳頭度。咁如果淨係練呢兩樣，個速度唔夠快。標子係要練速度。His his question is among the three forms as 小念頭、尋橋、標子 ，which would would be the most important? And Zhi Gong's answer is 啊，小念頭 is for training the fundamental ability. 啊，尋橋 is for adding your body movement. For example, up. Sending your body power up to the fist, and beauty adding, uh, uh, 小念头 and 长桥's power, but in high speed to generate power from speed. So, uh, let him to say which is is the most important thing. But without 小念头 you just can't do the other two parts. Without 长桥you can't mobilize and cool your body momentum. And without uh, beauty you can't generate power in high speed. So, open question back to you. Is it, is it true that Siegel um, has already lost a lot of his power? Since oh. I've heard him say before he's lost oh. two thirds of his power. Oh. Or whatever. 師傅，你依佢問啊，師傅，你依家係誒已經比以前咧係係弱咗好多噶啦，係咪？弱咗，即、yeah. 係、yeah. yeah. 嗰種動作敏捷嗰度咧，係就弱咗啲噶啦。哦，對 ，the swiftness, the response, the sensitivity is is weaker than before, much weaker than before. Just natural. 問題係因為年紀問題，係因為年紀問題嚇。啊，咁會唔會誒隨住年紀有啲嘢係反而係增長咗咧？會唔會有啲咁嘅？嗰個喺認識上、解釋上可能會增長咗。哦，係啊。In explaining, understanding, or communicating to others in this area, yes. You you mean you mean right? Yeah. Ah, so so he ah ah, you mean him? So, Gong, you have not seen him doing strength, ah, these kind of strength, ah, these kind of things. He has not strength. He has not strength. He has not strength. No. The actually the term. Because he he has not said this thing. Actually, the term strength is is ah 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 description. I coined it. Ah, he didn't check anything about this. I was very weak. So 112 pounds. I'm about this tall. But I'm very strong. I'm I was weak, but I was strong. Ah, ah, I have been to 60 years old. That year, I was with the Korean champion Dou Ling. When I was 60, I I I was demonstrating with the the champion. Uh, in Europe for uh, have, uh, weight lifting, he was he is about four hundred pounds. Yeah. Yeah. So I created this term to describe uh, 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 講個狀，我話我是但一個動作。I was talking about 尋橋。Yeah, any movement, I I can be very powerful. When I show this. 咁咁我話嗱，我好大力嘅，隻手。I say I I'm very powerful. 我就喺呢度。In this movement, 有冇人出嚟制止俾我？佢 invited anyone to stop him to do this. 咁點知個個唔出聲，突然間一個企高。No, no one responded, but a very big guy show up. Yeah. 哦，咁就全場人。Yeah, the whole audience applauded. 咁啊，有啲就喺度笑。Some just laughed. 咁咁啊，結果就同佢，咁我就打。Then he tried him with this movement. He can't stop him. He also studied Wing Chun. Then he 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 did this, and Sigong stopped him, and he couldn't do he couldn't do that.
，啱啱重我三倍。Three times of my weight <笑>。師傅，你仲有冇覺得你嘅能量一路仲繼續增加緊，定係已經係停咗？冇啦，而家開始退步。No decreasing actually。退步啦。Decreasing actually。年齡嗰個點都有多。Because of age, yeah, must have effect。唔知因為年齡退步，因為我有病退步，我而家暫時。But I'm not quite sure whether it's mainly because of age or because of my diseases. Is the room think there's anything for them to find out ten years, ten years down the track? Anything in Wing Chun left to discover? Oh, Sibu, you you think Wing Chun has still some places to open up? Oh, now to the present, I can only do what I can do now. Is there any room for me to improve? I still don't know what space I have left. I I only know I I have. 退步就一定噶啦。I only 即系力量嘅退步就一定噶啦。但系其余技术嘅进步咧，我哋自己都唔知。嗯嗯。I I only know what I have attained. I I don't know what I haven't been able to explore. But one thing is sure, my power will be decreasing. This is for sure. But technique technique wise, uh, there may be still uh something to explore. But I can't tell what they are. Leave, leave to Lima. I said, leave to Lima. He said, leave to Lima. He said, leave to Lima. He said, leave to Lima. Okay, so I just wanted to discuss a couple of points from that video. The first one is um, when Siegel talks about him losing power. And he said it's um, probably with old age or it could be because of uh, his illnesses. He's had a few illnesses. Uh, in his life, he's been told he's going to die three times by the doctors um, since he was very young, actually. And I'll, I'll, I'll make another video about that and talk about those things. But after the second seminar, um, uh, we went out for dinner and I was asking him at dinner and he said that what he believes actually is, is probably because of the, um, the damage that the medicines gave his joints. So for one of his diseases, which is um, very extremely low, blood platelet counts um, the doctors gave him uh, this medicine which he had to take for two weeks and uh, basically his joints was in was in agony it was in was in tremendous pain for actually a couple of years and that's the one of the reasons why uh, his students asked him this is going back a couple of decades before he died when he was in his 60s that's why the students asked him to um, make that DVD that he made um, so yeah, and he said he said after that the joints just were never really the same, and actually, a couple of decades after, fifteen years after, the same thing happened where his um, his eyes started to almost like look like he was internally bleeding, his calves were seizing up, his muscles is the, just the blood wasn't flowing, um, and he went to the he went to the hospital and they the doctor. Uh, it was a different doctor. I gave him the same medicine. He said, "No, no, I took this a while back, and it um, it ruined my joints." And the doctor said, "It's got nothing to do with the joints. This is, you know, for the blood. So, take it." And he took he took it for five days, and uh, sure enough, the pain came back again. I remember actually, I was I was I was in Hong Kong. It was quite quite sad to see the way he was. He was in so much pain, but he would still come up, and he would he wasn't training there because he could hardly stand. Uh, he wasn't sorry teaching there. Um, but he would just sit in the back and he was just working on his joints. He was trying to mobilize it, you know. Would, uh, yeah, it was quite sad to see. It was sort of, we would see him in the mirror while we were training. It was, you know, take him sort of five minutes to move his arm up very slowly and you can see he's, he's in agony and try to move it and he'll sort of sit there, try to put his mind in it. And um, in those last couple of seminars that you saw, his joints were still, it was better. So he was moving, obviously, it was demonstrating, but, but his joints were still in pain. Um, so... Uh, you know, and he said in, in, that, in that second seminar, he did actually mention that he believes he's only got about 20 or 30 percent of his power left, the power that he had when he was in his you know, 50s. Um, so that's one point. The second point, which I think is an important one to, to remember, is, um, is him talking about the, how simple his training was. You know? So he asked Yip Man, what is this 
Nim Tao. Why is it called Seal Nim Tao? It's a martial art. Why I call it Nim Tao? And Sigel, as he said, um, Yip Man would give him the same answer. It's just about Lot Nim. It's about the mind. Um, and just go practice. So that's what he did. So he'd go up on the rooftop and like he said, he would practice for, um, he said in the video, six to seven hours. But that's not including the couple of hours of swimming that he would do and the fitness stuff he would do, which is 10,000 punches and 3,000 kicks. Um, but in his own training, like he said, majority of his training was on his own. Um, telling us sort of in detail how he would train, he said he would stand there because Yip Man told, Yip Man said, this is about the mind, it's, we don't use any muscular force. Um, so, and we use our mind to move. So he said that he was intrigued by that. So he believed Yip Man, first, that's the very important thing. He believed in that absolutely no muscular force. Second thing is that he went to practice with it. So he said he would stand there and he would just think, Okay, I'm going to stand here and do Tan Tao. My elbow softly wanting to come in to move this out of the center line. But I'm not going to use any muscular effort. And that's why he said he would do it very slowly as if it's not moving. Because he said he would stand there and he would just think, I'm not going to use any muscle. I'm not going to use any effort. And just be completely present and just try to think or will the Tan Tao to happen. Um, and, you know, throughout time, as you practice with persistence, hey, if you think about it, it can be quite boring for people that just want to, you know, do this quickly, okay, and then find someone to tease out, which is a majority of his, or a lot of his earlier students were doing that. When I, asking people that were training with him in the 50s, 60s, asking how the training was, his training was basically just tease out and teaching them how to fight, because that's what it was about. It was about learning how to fight, challenge fires, and this is around Bruce Lee's time. Um, so people would come in and uh, they would, you know, uh, practice their ceiling towel, you know, and what, maybe watching other people doing chi sao and talking about, oh yeah, the, you know, the price of meat's gone up or whatever, so not really focusing, and maybe do chum Q, build chi sao, uh, quickly do the forms and then start chi saoing and, and getting into it and, and sort of, you know, sparring and fighting, bloody mouth, all that kind of, that, that's how the training was like. Whereas the way he practiced was completely different. He wasn't into it, into that side. He did a lot of the other kind of stuff, but he was trying to figure out, he approached it from from a mindset of trying to figure out what does this mean, not using any muscular force, using the mind. And a big thing I would like to highlight, and he always highlighted, is the persistence. The persistence of uh, studying and delving into the forms. The answers are all in the forms. The way he got it wasn't from Yip Man correcting his shoulders and all that. And as he says, Yip Man's teaching was like, okay, you do this and then I'm going to go sleep. And he would literally sort of you know, go like that, sleep, lie down and watch people train. And that's why the seniors were the ones that were teaching the juniors, not Yip Man himself. Yip Man would just say what you got to do and that's it. you got to f figure it out. Um, uh, so so he, was, he would always say you need to do the forms and you need to do them persistently. So obviously in this day and age we don't have, you know, um, seven hours to do... Uh, Wing Chun and then go do our fitness and stuff like you know, then we go to work, you have family life, things like that. But one thing he highlighted is that the continuous practice. So, you know, having 15 minutes a day, so for the ones that do go to class and do chi sound, do training, in the self training, I'm talking about the self training aspect, putting 10 to 15 minutes aside and just delving into a form or just a movement in that meditative, slow, uh, sort of relaxed way and doing that every day, seven days a week. And then later on, maybe after 15, instead of 15 minutes, you'll feel like doing it for 20 minutes because you start getting deep into it, 30 minutes. And then, you know, you, and then later on you have five minutes time because you're waiting for someone or whatever and you'll stand there and actually go into it. And this is how the internal practice really develops. One time I asked him, you know, just to show you the character or what his thinking was about, um, about his practice. I asked him, what about when you got sick? You know, so you, obviously you would get sick. Uh, especially in the beginning, the first couple of years before he got this sort of control in his body, he would get sick a lot, he was quite frail. Um, and he said, well, if I could physically stand, if I was sick, but if I could physically stand, I would still do the hours of practice. You know, so that was his mentality, like uh, nothing else to do. So they were living in a very, very small room. He was living with Yip Man for six years. He said the room was, you know, uh, probably as big as a king size bed, you know, so you, two small single mattresses could lay down, that's it. Uh, so, you know, you can't sort of go in your room, there was no internet, not, 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 you know, no attractions compared to now, no distractions, let's say. So, nothing else to do, so we'll just practice. So, this persistent practice, I think, is really the key. Whether it be a couple of hours a day or just 10 minutes a day. That's much better than doing, you know, 
two hours every Saturday. Much better to do 10 minutes every day and then uh, that way that continuation of practice will really um, accumulate some understanding, some, some experiential understanding within our body. Um, so yeah, I hope that makes sense.